Hi, this is Victoria Nolley, and here with me again is Dr. Darren McCauley. As I mentioned in my previous video, he is the director of the St. Andrews Sustainability Institute, and he, he is also a senior lecturer in the School of Geography and Sustainable Development at the University of St. Andrews. Uh, in the previous videos, we talked about fossil fuels and energy justice. We also talked about energy justice and alternative fuels, that is renewable energy. And we also explored more on the geographical perspective of energy justice. In this video, we want to look at energy justice from a global perspective. But before we start, I'd like Dr. McCauley to briefly introduce himself again. Well, thank you very much, uh, Victoria, for inviting me back. Um, yes, indeed, I uh, lead the St. Andrews Sustainability Institute, uh, which I'm very proud to have done for the last seven years. Um, I also have uh, been involved in a range of energy projects, some of which I want to raise, particularly in this video, as we're going to focus on energy justice from a global perspective. So I'll perhaps raise some examples from Russia Nepal, um, Vietnam and the US where I've done some work uh, over the past seven years. Okay, that is really interesting. So let's get started. Uh, what do we mean, like how can we understand energy justice from a global perspective? Because sure. like as we mentioned in our last video, different countries, different regions mm -hmm. face different energy challenges. So how can we bring it up globally? Yeah, uh, so I think the the starting point here is whenever you've travelled and worked on a, a range of projects, the common theme that I see in my work is the issue of energy access. Mm -hmm. So, so far we've talked a lot about energy generation, uh, electricity, heating, but energy access is an issue that globally we need to tackle. So over 2.5 billion people, depending on which source you use, do not have access to, to electricity or heating. Mm -hmm. uh, and quite often that access is intermittent. So uh, in my work in the Russian Arctic, uh, what I found was uh, this desire to have access to energy was exactly the same as what I found in, for example, in Nepal. Mm -hmm. uh, but one issue that cut across both uh, examples was this idea of having electricity all the time. Something that we take for granted, mm -hmm. uh, particularly uh, within the context that I've been working in. Uh, but this common global challenge of trying to ensure global energy access is something that I think unites the global perspective of energy justice. Okay, actually you've brought in energy just uh, energy access, I've written on energy access issues. Mm -hmm. And then for energy access, we realize that we have uh, four, we have four, four issues to tackle. Yes. That is affordability. Exactly. You have the electricity, but can you afford it? We, we, we have to talk about accessibility. Now, yes. like for people in developing countries, yes. if you have the resources, resources, but you cannot access electricity. Yes. And then sustainability, which we actually discussed. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the next question is, how, because you've talked about the issue of Russia and mm. that actually brings in energy justice from a global perspective. It does. Because I didn't even know that they had energy access issues. Oh yes. Obviously. Uh, which other examples can you give us besides Russia to bring in the global perspective of energy justice? Yes. yes. Um, I should say very quickly that yes. one of my Russian master students um, once contacted an agency in Russia to ask about fuel poverty. Uh, to which they replied, there's no such thing as fuel poverty in Russia, which of course is not the case. Mm -hmm. um, and whenever you go beyond Russia, even to the US, where uh, I conducted uh, some research for the EPSRC, uh, where we looked into fuel poverty and energy access issues across the US. And what we found was not necessarily the intermittency, but affordability mm -hmm. was a crucial um, sort of criterion where inequality was driven by the inability for a number of different sections of society to not afford consistent electricity. And the affordability aspect globally is something which is critical, mm -hmm. but I think particularly within the US example, where I worked on the, on the East Coast in particular, uh, affordability was this real driving issue for achieving energy justice. Yeah, and then uh, what should we the what should be the way forward to tackle um, 
energy justice in a global perspective? Yes. I think we have to try to tackle the issue of energy access by effectively coming together and, and understanding the fact that energy access is something which should be a critical human right. I know, I understand as a lawyer, you've got a much better understanding than uh, myself as a geographer, but I think pushing energy up the human rights agenda and particularly this issue of access, I think mm. is critical if we're going to get a global move towards not just reducing carbon emissions, mm -hmm. but also ensuring that this process of transition away from fossil fuels, at the very heart of it, make sure to ensure um, affordable and consistent access to electricity and heating. And if we unite behind that objective, I, I feel we might be able to get some momentum in that direction in a positive way. All right, and then I'll also just add something. Uh, you've mentioned about making energy access a global issue for us to be able to achieve uh, global justice. We know that energy access is under goal number seven. It is. Under the sustainable development goals. Mm -hmm. But there's also a connection between energy justice and other yes. SDGs. Yes. Now, for instance, uh, when you look at the SDG that concerns uh, gender equality, mm. you realize like in developing countries, is the women who are the main users of energy. Yep. So a woman will spend a lot of time collecting firewood. Very true. And they're the ones who are affected by indoor air pollution. Yes. So there's no way you, you can achieve uh, yeah. gender equality if it's the women who are mostly affected. Very and also true. you talk about healthy living. I mean, hospitals, they need energy. So there's no way you can achieve a goal on healthy living without tackling energy access. Education. You know, uh, right now we're in the library, but we're still using energy. So, yeah, it's a global issue, and there's no way we can achieve energy justice if we cannot tackle energy access. I absolutely agree. I'm glad that I've convinced you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I also agree. So, thank you very much, Darren. Thank you. Thank you. And in our next video, we shall discuss more on a transition to a low carbon economy from a geographical perspective. Stay tuned.